Hello, it's your conscience speaking again. I have a question for you. Where is sin located? Is it in your eye or in your foot? Is your brain a blob of sin? Of course not. Actually, Jesus settles the question for us as he says in Matthew 15, 18 through 19. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. So sin is in the heart and exists as a matter of preference and choice from a wicked disposition. When God commands a sinner to repent, he is not just asking him to stop sinning, but to change his wicked heart. Instead of having a sin-loving, God-hating heart, he commands sinners to make them a sin-hating, God-loving heart, as it says in Ezekiel 18.31. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? In our last conversation with Wicked Heart, we learned that he thought he could be happy if God would stop troubling him. So, Wicked Heart, it sounds like you hate God. I hate him more than I hate anyone else in the whole world. Why? For one, I am angry at him for being against me. I hate how he sends his preachers out to annoy and terrorize me. So you move it, you need to the stop. The devil deceives, I don't need to stop. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to proclaim the name of my Lord and Savior. Then you're my God is a Savior. He's a loving God. And because he's a loving God, he hates sin. He hates adultery. He hates lying. <laughs> He hates drunkenness. Stealing our rights. He is so intolerant and unloving. He should accept me for the way I am and embrace my diversity. Thou shall not do this. Thou shall not do that. Why did he have to make the way so narrow? All I want to do is have a little fun. Is that all? No, that is not all. He makes me live with you. You won't allow me to be happy, peaceful, or restful. Always making me feel guilty. Always condemning me. You need to be saved. You must be born again. Give your life to Christ. At least I can drown you out with my radio, TV, and Prozac. <laughs> Warning, 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 warning. Warning, ignoring your conscience and hardening against it leads to more and more corruption and further separation from God. Ultimately, it will lead to the irreversible condition of a seared conscience. None of those are good reasons. If a good loving father saw that the life of his child was in danger, he would quickly go to rescue him. Hi. Can I go get the mail, Daddy? Sure, Pumpkin. Thanks, Daddy. I love you. I love you too. Be careful.
Hello in there. So, anyway, I'm deathly allergic to bees. Oh, really? Uh, watch the road. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the last time I got stung, I went into shock and ended up in the hospital. I almost died. <coughs> ah! There's a bee in my pocket! <coughs> boss is not going to be happy. <laughs> it's okay, Pumpkin. You're safe now. <laughs> that is what God is trying to do with you. I am God's voice warning you to leave your life of sin because like the child whose life is in danger, you are in great danger of hell fire. He is opposed to your selfishness because he loves you and does not want you to destroy yourself. The reasons you hate him are the very reasons that you should love him. In your own words, you hate God more than you hate anyone else in the whole world. In spite of this, he is making loving efforts to rescue you.